What's up guys, Brandon Haverillo with Red Max Events. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're doing something a little different, kind of part of my photo booth series, but also just a generic vinyl application video for applying small decals. And particularly, I'm gonna show you how I apply my decals to the back of my iPad photo booth. <laughs> So there's several reasons you might wanna actually apply and add vinyl decals to your photo booth. The main reason is because it's an easy upsell that you can upgrade your corporate clients, even your bride and groom, and put their names on the back of your photo booth. It also allows you to customize the icons on the front of the Moby booth. Additionally, you can match the theme of an event if it has a Valentine's Day theme. You could do heart decals like this. If it's a winter theme, you could do snowflakes. The possibilities are endless. It allows you to brand the actual booth and stay unique standing out from your competition. Let's start with the vinyl itself. I get all my decals from a local printer here called Vinyl Works. I'll leave a link to their website down below. You could check them out. They will ship anywhere. So if you wanted to order these graphics and, and decals, they can ship them to you. And there's a few different options and styles when you're ordering vinyl. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is make sure you're getting a low tack vinyl. You don't want anything that is ultimately made to be a permanent vinyl that is going to damage your photo booth or your DJ front board, whatever it is. So get a low tack vinyl. And again, I recommend applying these either the day before or right before your event and then removing them right after because the longer the vinyl sits on, especially with heat or extreme temperatures, it is harder to peel off. You could do decals like this, which are simply cut out graphics. They could be fully printed on or they could just be black and white. These are hearts that I had made. They're cut out of vinyl and I can then peel them off and just simply apply them to the photo booth. I'll overlay a few pictures here where we've done that with various decals. That's an easy way to add them to your photo booth and brand your photo booth or match your client's theme. However, you can take it one step further and actually fully vinyl wrap your full photo booth. I'll also insert a few pictures up here from events where we've done that. And if you guys are interested in a full vinyl wrap video on how to install that, let me know in the comments below as it is a much longer process and a much more complicated process to line everything up. The next option after those cutout decals is a clear print. Now I've got an example of the clear vinyl here. Basically this full piece is clear vinyl and the graphic is printed on. So when you stick this on, you don't see the clear part, you just see the printed part. However, I will note that this is not my favorite option when it comes to applying decals because the clear vinyl does show a little glare off the light. So you will notice it is all one piece and it doesn't look as clean or professional as something like cutout decals. Now, when we fully wrap our photo booth, the vinyl template that Moby Booth offers is several different pieces. You have the kiosk stand itself, then you have the base plate, and then you have the head plate. So when we offer our clients the options, we give them the option to fully wrap the photo booth, add decals, or just do the back of the head plate. Most of our clients opt for the back of the head plate as it is an affordable option compared to the full wrap. It's also easier on us and it makes the photo booth look really good by adding their logo. So I have one of the top pieces here that I'm going to be applying right now with a Best of Long Island logo. You'll notice it has the full circle head as well as the bottom piece that's gonna go where the vent and the light control knob is. I found that unless you're fully wrapping the booth with a certain color and you need that to match, I try and cut that part off and we just wrap the round part. Because I have him printed on white vinyl, you don't really notice the color difference too much and it's easy to just cut that off since the body is actually already white. Now I'm gonna go over some of the tools you need and some of the tools that I recommend. I'll also have links to everything down below so if you're interested in any of the particular items or tools I'm using, you can check them out in the description. After we go through the tools, I'm gonna actually apply this graphic and show you step by step how to do it. So there are some tools you're gonna to need no matter what. The first one's gonna be a scissor, and this is going to be to cut out the vinyl decal because it is going to be on a transfer paper. So you're gonna to wanna to cut it as close as possible to the actual vinyl graphics. The second tool, 
you're going to need is a razor blade. You could pick up a large 100 pack, 50 pack of these blades. They basically go in box cutter knives like this, but I recommend just using the blades themselves for a more precise cut. And this is going to be to trim off the excess of the print. And I should note that when my printer prints it, and I think most will always allow a little extra room on the vinyl. And this leaves room for error so that you don't have to be exact. And then you just simply cut off the extra. The razor blades work best because they're super sharp as opposed to a scissor is not going to be as sharp. You'll then need something like a squeegee or a credit card. Now I have these which are actual vinyl tools, but you can use something like this, which I got from the dollar store, which is more of like a shower squeegee. It will work, but it's not ideal. Ideally you want something with a felt edge. Worst case, you could use the plastic edge, meaning you could also use a credit card or a license or something out of your wallet. Next, you'll need a roll of tape. I recommend painter's tape because it's low tack, easy to pull off and it's not gonna damage your vinyl, but you'll need some sort of tape to hold the vinyl in place while you start to apply it. And lastly, you're going to need a rag and some sort of cleaning supplies to clean off the photo booth and make sure the surface is ready to go. Now, there are some tools that I would recommend you have, but you don't necessarily need them to get the job done. One is a paper cutter or or kind of like an envelope opener. This is gonna make it easier than scissors to cut the extra paper off. Another item that I don't find myself using too often, but every once in a while, you might need a tape measure um, depending on your graphic. This way you can properly center it. You might've noticed I'm also wearing gloves. I do like to do this just to prevent getting fingerprints on the vinyl, but they're not totally necessary. And in fact, in some steps, it's actually easier not to have gloves on so you can get more precise or closer to the vinyl or the blade or whatever it is. Let's get into step one. Now the first step is to thoroughly clean the surface. So you're gonna want some sort of Windex or cleaning supplies, and you're gonna really wanna scrub and make sure there's no dust or particles on the surface that you're applying the vinyl to. I'll also note you're gonna want to give this a few minutes before you actually apply the vinyl so that you can ensure it's fully dry. Once that's done, you're gonna grab the vinyl itself and you're gonna cut all of the extra paper or the paper backing off so that you can get as close to the actual vinyl as possible. This is going to make it easier to line up and see what you're doing. Now that that's done, you're going to want to line up your graphic. So you could do this a few ways, but you're gonna to wanna to make sure the bottom is lined up, make sure the logo is centered, and make sure there's about an even overlap all the way around. And this is where your tape comes into play. Once you get that centered, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have two pieces of tape ready, and you're gonna place one on either side, taping the vinyl graphic to the edge of the photo booth exactly where it needs to be placed. Once you are confident you have it centered, you've checked all the way around that it's going to overlap the same amount, then I like to work from the top down. So to begin, I'm gonna take my razor blade and I'm going to begin to peel off the top of the vinyl. When you do peel the vinyl off the paper, be careful that you don't pull directly straight up because you can actually stretch the vinyl. So you wanna make sure you're very gentle when you peel it back. And again, try not to get too many fingerprints on the vinyl and definitely don't get any creases in the vinyl. Once you get it peeled back like this, you can grab your razor or even a pair of scissors or the paper cutter and simply cut the paper off. Again, just going up to about where the tape is. What this is going to do is allow us to set the vinyl in place because once the top half is stuck on, we know it can't move and then we can simply work our way backwards. So now you're gonna to wanna to grab your squeegee tool Pick the vinyl up and slowly work from the center out and take your time with this. You definitely don't want to rush when applying it because you could easily get air bubbles. So again, you're going to want to work your way from the center out, pushing out all the air along the way. If you see any creases or air bubbles, you might want to back up slightly, but again, be careful not to peel off too much once it starts to stick because you will stretch the vinyl. So you'll notice I pushed it on. We made it all the way around the edge. None of it is too short. So that means we did a good job lining it up so far. Now there are the screws on the Moby booth so we could just simply apply pressure around that area to stick them to it. Now that that's set in place, the vinyl can't go anywhere. We can carefully remove our tape. And like I said, this is why I recommend the painter's tape because it's not going to damage or peel off the vinyl itself. You're then gonna wanna flip the graphic up 
And this is where it might be helpful to have two people to help you. However, it can be done with one. You're going to want to just slowly peel this back while applying it and pushing it from the other side with the squeegee. Again, working your way from the center out. And again, just take your time with this. I'm going to speed it up for the video's sake, but take your time as you apply the vinyl. Now, as you get towards the bottom here, you can kind of peel the rest of the vinyl off. And as you can see, it started to rip here, but that's okay because that's actually the part I'm going to cut off. And this is where I recommend kind of switching over to the plastic edge as it is a little sharper and smaller. But you're going to want to really push this vinyl into the crack at the bottom, just like so. I then recommend just running around the edge and kind of creasing that extra vinyl over the edge so that it really sticks and it cuts off easier. Once you're confident that you're all set applying the vinyl, there's no air bubbles, this is where you can grab that razor blade. What I'm going to do is cut off this extra first. So I'm going to simply put the razor blade in the corner and just carefully run it along the bottom. Finally, the last step is going to be trim that excess. Now, if you're happy with the way it looks and you don't have a lot of excess, you could probably get away with leaving it on, but I always like it to look nice and clean and finished so that it doesn't look like vinyl. So what I do is take the razor, I put it at an angle on the edge so that I don't scrape the paint, and I slowly work it around the full photo booth. And just like that, you have wrapped the back of your photo booth head with a vinyl decal. This allows you to fully print on it, change the color, etc. But again, like I mentioned, you could also get this as a cutout decal if you just wanted to put it on the back. However, I found this to be the easiest solution, although it does take a few more minutes to line up and apply. When you're done with it, it's a lot easier to peel off. If you were to get this logo as a cutout logo and all these letters are cut out separately, you're going to have to put the razor under each one and it's going to take longer to peel off. I will also note that these vinyl decals are really a one-time use. As you can see, they are going to get wrinkled and stretched out when you try and remove them. So just keep in mind, you'll only get one event out of these unless you leave it on your photo booth. The last thing I'm going to show you is how to just apply a simple decal like a heart. The process is a lot easier, but you'll notice when it's cut out like this, my vinyl printer puts it on a transfer paper, which basically is a low-tack paper that grabs the front side of the vinyl, allowing you to peel off the back and now have the sticky side out on the heart. You can then simply line it up where you want it and place one edge on. I still recommend you don't try and place this on at once because you will get air bubbles. Grab your squeegee tool and simply work from that edge out. Again, working your way in from the center and out towards the edges, which will allow you to push any air bubbles out. Once you apply the whole thing, make sure you apply a lot of pressure to make sure all the edges are adhere to the photo booth. And then simply peel back the transfer paper very slowly and you'll notice the graphic will stay stuck because the adhesive on it is a lot stronger. I hope this video was able to help you in some way. If it did, please consider leaving a like down below. If you have any questions, you can leave that in the comments down below. If you're new around here, subscribe to my channel and turn on that bell so you get notified every time I post a new video. If you guys wanna follow me on my journey or check out some behind the scenes footage and pictures from these types of videos, follow me on Instagram, it's at Brandon Havrilla. As always guys, thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next one.